Here's a deep cut for you. Remember when I made a video showcasing my 7 days to die worlds on console? Near the end of that video, I said this. I usually save this kind of creativity for a game like Minecraft. Well, boy howdy, do I got a doozy for you. I'm on Minecraft, and today I'm going to be showing you my Survival Awesomeness 2.0 world. Because it's so much better than the first. I started this world when the Xbox One Edition came out, way back in 2014. I've been working on this world on and off for the last few years, and today I'm going to be showing you all of its quirks and features. I've spent many a moon on this world, constantly building, upgrading, whatever. And like any sensible high school teenager, I invested so many hours into this world perfecting it, instead of doing homework. And it's called Survival Awesomeness because I did this all in survival mode. I'm just in creative mode to expedite the tour process. So this is my house. Let's go in. The first house ever built on this world comes with a lovingly furnished living room space. The campfires are a recent addition, before that they were netherrack and fire, and I had fire spreads turned off so it wouldn't burn down my house. And I thought it'd be neat to put the world map next to the door, cause it does look very nice, you can see the whole town on it. I even got all the music discs. Next we have the kitchen, it's a very spacious one with a nice checkerboard marble floor. We got a fridge, furnaces, I don't know, there's, a, there's supposed to be a cauldron here, that's supposed to be the sink. There. Pretend there's water in there, that's the sink. Next we'll head upstairs, and this used to be just one big room with my bed tucked in the corner, but I figured I'm just gonna segment it into a little hallway, you know, make it like a house. So, I have my bedroom here, all nice and furnished, it's even got carpet, can you believe it? And I thought, what am I gonna put in the room next door? Well, how about a bathroom? See? It's even- look at that, it's got a toilet. You can just do your solemn duty and take a duty. And when you're done, you can wash up at the sink, and hell, you can even take a shower. Uh, that's supposed to open. Yeah, see? Water. Now you can be a clean boy. And then we got this little outdoor balcony with a nice view of the town. And if you want, you can pretend to sit and enjoy the view from the mock patio furniture. Going even further upstairs now, into the attic, I made this neat little meeting room conference table thing. I made two of the walls like window walls. I don't know why, I just thought it looked cool. And finally, the basement. I just added this one day because I was bored. I figured, I don't have a basement, so let's make it a fucking man cave. Look at this shit. You got the fucking U-shaped sofa with the big-ass flat-screen TV. You got a mini bar with stools and drinks, and you got a pool table. This basement has it all. I really went above and beyond with the interior design here. I fancied it up with some paintings and... Oh, what? A false door? And it leads back here to this big storage room where I just stockpile all my materials. And so, there you go. That is my house. Oh, god damn it, we still have the rest of the fucking world. Alright, well... Strap yourself in, lads, it's gonna take a while. Let's head to the next building over this lovingly made cobblestone bridge. I guess I'll do this in semi-chronological order, so I'm saving the big brown box for later. Right now, we're going to look at the Higgins Lighthouse. Made by my friend Mike, this is the second addition to the world. It's just a fancy stone tower, but since it's on a lake, I guess Lighthouse is a fitting name? I don't know. You go up this spiral staircase here, it leads out to this little balcony plateau farm thing that he built. Very nice. Very pleasing to look at. You go up this ladder here and you enter the dog room. These are the dogs of the round table. There's no tearful fancy backstory behind this. Mike just got bored one day and decided to have a dog for each type of color dye there was in the game. Finally at the top floor is his living quarters with a fuck ton of furnaces, some cakes, and that's about it. You do get a nice panoramic view of the town, though. Now let's move on to my buddy Reese's house. This is the one and only Reese's Peace. It was made a few months after I started this world, but it is truly a gem. 
right when you walk in, you're met with this beautiful mural of paintings on the left. Nice little blue and red checker carpet here, and, you know, this is the living quarters. He made this nice little outside porch here with some seating and a little boat for going down the lake. He's got the sugarcane farm going on. You know, this is like a little scenic area. You got a two-way ladder, and going upstairs, you got the bedroom, which is very lovingly furnished. You got this little corner couch with some cake, and you got these nice potted plants. I like the way he did the window going around the entire room. That's a nice touch. And then going down that same ladder, you got the strip mine. Nothing much to see here. So yeah, that's Reese's house, and if you don't like it, then you can get lost, bub. Next, a unique early addition to the world, one where I had to construct not one, but two bridges to connect to the rest of the town. This is my friend Garrick's house, or this is more of a hut than anything. It's literally just a shit shack. It's got a farm, it's got some animals, and that's all you really need. Just a little tiny hut on an island that connects to the rest of the town. At one point, my old friend Leroy joined this world and made his own house out of birch wood. It's got a nice little dock back here with river access and a boat launch. Very nice. The main room is just a staging area for the real meat and potatoes of the house. Take this ladder down, you enter this big furnace room. You're also flanked by these little interior farms he built on either side of the room. And every room in this house connects to each other. He put doors like every fucking where. And this is the bedroom, in front of the giant Super Death Skull painting. And yeah, that's pretty much it. All in all, it's a very nice looking addition to the world. I like the rose bushes, the banners, cocoa pods on the tree here, this little pathway he made. It's just a very aesthetically pleasing house. Going back to a creation of my own, here is a house that I built in another one of my friend's worlds that I was just so impressed with, I decided to recreate it here. Kind of just a vacant house for anyone to move into, but until that day comes, it's just a house. And it's got cats, bitch. This is the living room. This is the kitchen. But when you go upstairs, you got this little open floor area with the bedroom over there, and this little mini bar over here. Not just that. The bedroom just has like glass walls so you can see outside, and there's a little balcony so that you can enjoy the outside air as well. And if that wasn't enough for you, you even got this nice little rooftop pool. Wee. So yeah, I just like the way this house turned out on one of my friend's worlds, so I built it here. Now let's take a look at my friend Justin's house. And that was my friend Justin's house. This building over here with the weird roof is the hotel of the town, the Smart Inn. I know, fitting name. This here is the lobby where you can check in at the receptionist desk and get your room key, which are just on the wall here for you to grab, I guess. And right around the corner is the tavern. Lots of different seating arrangements here. We can pretend that this little kitchen here is where the underpaid workers cook food and get drinks for everyone that's staying here. And up these stairs here are the rooms. I just built a big hallway full of rooms and designed each individual one. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. And these last two rooms at the end, these are the deluxe rooms that you gotta cough up a little extra dough for. They're just slightly bigger rooms with big window walls. I don't know what I was... That's the deluxe room. You're paying for that. You're paying for these views here, son. Look at that. Now that's a hotel. Finally, the reason this place has an oddly shaped roof, well, it wouldn't be a hotel without a little recreational area, so I added a big rooftop pool and lounge. My thought process was that you have to have it partially covered in case it, like, rains or something, I don't fucking know. It's got these nice little recliner chairs for sunbathing, and this pool's even got a deep end. Oh yeah, that's how you know I'm fucking serious. This is supposed to be like a cocktail lounge over here. I don't know, I was just tired and just wanted to finish this, so that's what I did. And that is the lovely hotel. Now that we're done with this lovely part of the neighborhood, let's just keep on trucking, huh? Still got a ways to go. So a long time ago, I was playing on this world with my friend Reese, and we're just like, hey, what would we do if we were in a Minecraft world? What would our job be? Well. 
why not build a restaurant? I'm like, that's a great idea. So I did it. I built the restaurant. Here it is. This is the restaurant. Let's go inside and do restaurant things. A lot of time went into thinking about how many people would be eating here realistically and how the seating arrangements should be. I don't know. For shits and giggles, I just did a simple menu and tried to just theme it around Minecraft food. And be sure to BYOP, bring your own potion. <laughs> Shoot me. And then we got this outdoor dining area, a nice little lakefront dining, if you will, because it's right on the water, you know. And now we've done a full loop of the main original portion of the town before I decided to expand out this way towards the desert. Oh shit, I forgot the library. Yeah, that giant brown box building from the beginning of the video. Well, let's do it now because this came along later in the world's life cycle. So yeah, I built a library. I was bored one day and thought, you know what this town needs? A place to educate yourself. And so I spent all day building a library and this is the end result. A library that's second to none, one that rivals even the Library of Alexandria. It's got a couple of these purple banners that I stole from the end city. And it's got a nice big upstairs portion with plenty of seats so you can sit your ass down and read a book. I like the little sunroofs that I did, that was a nice touch. Okay, now we're done with the main part of town. I really like this tree trellis that I made on the pathway here. It's very nice, very scenic. I was bored one day and figured I should do something to spruce up the pathways, you know, so I just did this. Now I know what you're thinking. Wow, this looks fucking ugly. And it is, but it's cool on the inside. I made this house for my friend Other Mike. I wanted to try something different. I wanted to go with a more, like, diagonal looking house, you know? Yeah, really, this house was just an experiment. I went for this mezzanine upper portion that you could walk up to, and that would be the bedroom. And here's his computer where he works on his projects. And, uh, yeah, it's a nice little weirdly diagonal shaped house. Now let's move on to a slightly more pleasing to look at house, this little lake house that I built. You open the doors to this nice loft here that serves as the entryway that goes downstairs into the middle of the house. This is the main living area, you know, kitchen, couch, TV. It's got big windows so you can look out to the lake from the inside. And you got a little bedroom tucked into the corner here. And whenever you want, you can step outside onto this porch dock thing and just enjoy the view. And with that, we are now in the home stretch. As you can see, we've walked around this whole portion of the town here, and now we're on this last little addition I made. This branching path that goes up the hill over yonder. But before we go to those giant houses you just saw, why not stop here at the general store? Of course, we got a hotel, a restaurant, you gotta have your own store. Your town has to have a store, that's the rule. So I built this because I realized, oh shit, we don't have a store in this town, I guess I gotta build one. Wow, it's just how I pictured it. We got soda and snacks, we got non-perishables and canned goods. That's the freezer section. And you even got produce in this bitch. You got vegetables and fruits growing on display. And these are the cash registers, because there's not a fucking cash register in this game. But wait, there's more. This is a family-owned business, so the owner lives in a loft above the store. And as you can plainly see, they are rolling in the dough. Now we can move on to the final portion, the rich neighborhood, the cul-de-sac at the top of the hill. And boy howdy, what the fuck was I thinking with this big brick house? I guess we'll just get that out of the way because it's such an eyesore. I mean, I never make anything besides wooden houses, so I wanted to do something different, alright? Fucking sue me. At least it looks decent on the inside. I mean, I was going for a cozy look and I thought, eh, brick should do the trick, you know? It's good at keeping the heat in, you add a little fireplace and it'll keep you warm for the winter, you know? In the upstairs, you got the bedroom, and you got this little door here that goes out to another balcony because I have a fixation with adding balconies to houses, shut up. But this one has a nice view of the wilderness and that little mushroom island you see out in the distance there. Now, without further ado, here it is. Welcome to the coal de sac Get it? Boo! You stay! So let's start off with the weakest link here. Yes, I made another boring ass house. I don't know why, I, I guess I just thought, I did it before, I'll fucking do it again. 
But this one is a fully carpeted downstairs area, which I guess is cool. And then this also has a little closet for just the one singular chest. <laughs> this house is so fucking cool, you guys. Okay, got that out of our system. Now let's do the noise house. Nice. So I'm just gonna leave a disclaimer here. These next two houses I both got from YouTube videos, and I don't know who to credit because I can't for the life of me find them. But as you can see, this one here is a very radical departure from a lot of these other just cardboard box looking houses I've built. But I still feel like I did a good job with the interior design on this one. So you got the little checkerboard tile kitchen here, the little nook with the TV and the sofa, and right through this door here, you get a little pool with some patio furniture. Upstairs, it gets a bit more cramped because of the way the house is designed, but I managed to make it work. Just tuck the bed right against the wall here, put a bookshelf. Then you can step outside and relax on the balcony here with this weird support pillar. Have a nice view of the cul-de-sac. Pretty neat house design. I basically did it to just follow a tutorial and kind of expand my knowledge of making different houses that don't look like boxes. And now we have the piece de resistance. This big motherfucker is the Quartz Manor. This puppy took four days to make, because I had to keep going to the nether and getting a fuck ton of quartz. But this is the end result. And wouldn't you know it, this was the other house that I looked up a tutorial on how to make. And it ended up being way taller than I was expecting, but I'm just like, hey, go big or go home. And that's exactly what I did, both inside and out. So let's give it a proper MTV Cribs tour, shall we? I will say, though, this was very fun to work on. The video I followed just showed the outside, but it didn't specify what to do on the inside, so I did what I could to make the inside as fancy as possible, and just stretched my wings and tried to make everything look nice and bougie. So the lobby here, apart from the grand staircase, has this big fireplace area to the right and a big dining room table to the left. I didn't know where to put the kitchen, so I ended up hollowing out this spot under the staircase, and it ended up working out. It kind of just fits there. There's doors on either side of the stairs, and they both lead out to the big, spacious backyard with a giant-ass pool, and even has a swim-up bar at the very end. It has all the tables and seating you could ever need in a backyard, plus not to mention this gorgeous view of the wilderness. I haven't got a clue as to why I left some handrails absent from this part, but fuck safety, I guess. Now let's go up the big staircase to the loft upstairs. You got this nice little lounge area here, and you got paintings up the wazoo all over the place. I think lanterns were just added to the game when I built this house, so this is the only house that has them. Let's start with the master bedroom. Look at that big blue bed right at the end with the window, and look at that. Ain't that beautiful? Look at how picturesque that is. It even has a private bathroom, complete with its own bath and a sink for washing up. What more could you ask for? A toilet? Nope. Not in here. Only my house gets the toilet, capiche? And right next door is the guest bedroom, which I also tried to make, you know, look nice, because if you're staying here as a guest, you deserve to at least be a part of the richness of the place. But you don't get your own bathroom. You gotta walk your ass all the way down the hall to the guest bathroom that's over here. And this just has a sink. So you're shitting in the corner and you're bathing outside with a garden hose. And there's a third floor, the attic. I decided to do three floors since this is a tall house, so what am I going to put up here? A study. You know, just a place to unwind, relax, read some books, absorb some knowledge and whatnot. I decided to add an office here, like my office. So this room acts as the waiting area, the waiting room, for when you want to see me and talk some business. And then here it is the most underwhelming office you've ever seen in your life. Of course, it's got a desk with my big chair on the right and the guest chairs on the left. Of course, it's got a corner sofa and TV because I can't help myself. And in case I don't feel like sleeping downstairs, I can sleep upstairs here. <sighs> well, I don't know about you, but I'm about ready to wrap this tour up. We've pretty much gone over every major structure in this town, except for one. But real quick, I want to show you this, this little island. This has always been here and I didn't really know what to do with it, so I just added this little picnic spot. I just thought it looks neat. 
Plus, when my friend Mike originally joined this world, he made his house under the water. Yeah, I almost forgot about this place, so let's take a quick look. The entrance lets you peer out into the water here, and that's pretty much it. He moved out and built that big lighthouse, so the rest is history. I saved the best for last. I wanted to build a public space, you know, like a park. A nice scenic spot where people would gather and just admire the scenery. Really, I just wanted a neat place to put a beacon, and so that's what I did. May I present to you Beacon Hill Memorial Park. It is in no way related to Beacon Hill in Boston. You go up the steps and there's just a fountain in the middle and a bunch of park benches. And then over here we have the titular Beacon situated right behind the fountain. It's got this cool yellow beam that's coming out of it. And it's made of diamonds because I'm rich. And last but not least, there's a second monument behind the beacon, the dragon egg, the one from none other than the Ender Dragon. I just thought it'd be neat to put a little monument here as well, because you know, slaying the Ender Dragon is an achievement, so I figured why not make a little statue or monument to it. And for the longest time, this world lay dormant because I was saving up money for a PC. And when I finally bought one for myself, one of the first things that popped into my head was, I really want to transfer this world to my PC, so how do I transfer an Xbox world to Java Minecraft? After a couple of days of figuring that shit out, I eventually did it, and for the first time in my life, I got to see what this world looks like with shaders on. The reason I did this is because, like I said in my 7 days video, I at least wanted to preserve this on the internet in case I lost it. But another big reason is because as of yesterday, at the time of this video, that world turned 10 years old. A whole decade has passed. I've been through high school, college, my first job, a fucking global pandemic. So I like to think of this world as a time capsule. I took one look at that day and it just hit me like a truck. I thought to myself, Damn, I'm getting old. It almost feels like life moves too fast at points. People are always trying to see into the future to look at what's ahead. When life moves too fast, you just gotta slow down.